Hi everyone, welcome back to The Art of Business English, where we help people like you get the language skills you need for doing business in English. Today I've got episode 167 and I'm going to be looking at hybrid meetings, okay? So for many of us, this has become a common way to attend meetings or to hold meetings. Now hybrid meetings are a great way to get more flexibility in your workday and hybrid meetings can also be run from the comfort of your own home. This is saving you even more time because you're avoiding the commute. But there are a few things to keep in mind before you start running one. So that's what we're going to be looking at today. So let's take a look at hybrid meetings, what they are, and how to run them effectively. What is a hybrid meeting? So before we, before we get started, uh, let's quickly actually dis define or look at what a hybrid meeting is. So hybrid meetings are a powerful blend of in-person and virtual collaboration. So they are ca basically characterized by attendees joining the meeting both in person, so at the office environment, uh, as well as by people who join virtually uh, by making a video call or by dialing in on a regular phone, okay? So these types of meetings have become extremely popular, as you can imagine. And, and as a, as particularly as a way of connecting remote working staff with their office-based colleagues. So let's look at why you should run hybrid meetings. So hybrid meetings are a great tool for getting the most out of teams and to help them collaborate, which is important. And, and furthermore, to help them collaborate effectively even if they are not in the same physical location, which is of course uh, very important nowadays as we have more and more people working from home. Okay, some reasons why you should run a hybrid meeting are the following. Firstly, you can connect people who are working from home with the office, which is obviously beneficial. Uh, you can connect people who are away on a business trip with the office, which is also important because you're connecting them with their teams. And you can also allow people more flexibility on where they work from, which is great. Nowadays, we've, we've, we've embraced you know, working from home more, and therefore some people may choose to work two or three days a week from home and the rest of the days in the office, which is great flexibility. Uh, another point is that it can keep people in the loop and maintain you know, that sense of community and camaraderie that you get with working with teams, okay? Uh, following on from that, another one that's really important is you can expand your teams, and I love this one, you can expand your teams and your business without investing in uh, additional office space, which is often quite expensive. So think about it, you know, I mean, if you have a team of 20 and you expand it and you double that team to 40 or 50 people, it's gonna cost a lot to uh, you know invest in a new office space that has the capacity for that number of people. So you can expand and grow your business and do it really cost effectively by having these types of meetings. Uh, it's also cutting down on commuting and contributing, or this in turn contributes to less global warming, which is really important. It also helps employees achieve a healthy work and personal life balance. Let me give an example of that. Uh, for example, when parents need to like care for or stay home and care for a, ch a sick child, that's really uh, something that in the past maybe we had to rely upon our parents-in-law or our you know or, or our parents or get you know get the kids' grandparents to come in uh, or, or pay for a nanny uh, or, or what some parents do or used to do was just give their kids some medicine and send them off to school. Uh, which then again helped contribute to other kids getting sick. So with this work-life balance uh, and working remotely, if, if your kid's sick, you can stay home and look after them and still work from home, which is great. Okay, let's look at the next one. So my next point is how to get the most out of your hybrid meetings. And this is really what the, the main uh, like point of this episode is about, okay? Today we're gonna be looking at some tips and techniques to show you how you can run those meetings effectively and maybe some of the things that you should look out for, uh, particularly technological problems. So in the next part of this episode, I would like to share with you some tips on how you can get the most out of your hybrid meetings. So the AOBE team run, basically we run both weekly hybrid meetings as well as hybrid classes, 
which are even more difficult. So we really know what we're talking about and we've, and we've basically learned this uh, from experience, okay? So we've learned this firsthand, how you can do this so we know what works and what doesn't work, okay? So the, my number one or first tip is make sure you log in to the meeting five to 10 minutes early. Why? Well, basically because online meetings are really convenient and because of this, we tend to log in at the last minute. And this is a bit of a trap. You can fall into that trap. You know, you've got many things happening, you're quite busy. So you just go, oh, I'll just log into that meeting now. You're still in your pajamas. But <laughs> this is a trap because if things go wrong, and they do, then you basically arrive late and you know, that never looks good in a meeting, arriving late, okay? So just be careful with that, try and arrive early. So if you're leaving the meeting, then you should also log in ahead of time. This is really important, okay? So the reason for this is that uh, basically we want to welcome the online participants as they start to arrive. And here you can also engage in some small talk and I'll link up to that on the blog, so check that out. This is really good for making people feel a part of the team. And especially if you've got guests coming from the outside or people who are not part of your organization, if they arrive early and there's no one there, yeah, it's a little bit, maybe they feel a bit isolated or, oh, am I in the right meeting? So it's a good idea if you're running the meeting or even if you're logging in to arrive five or 10 minutes early. My second tip is it's a good idea to have your camera and audio activated as soon as you log in, okay? Make sure you test everything by saying a quick hello. Hi guys, welcome, how's it going? Okay, if you get no response, you'll probably be able to quickly check what the technical problem is uh, or the technical problem that you're facing and then you can try and solve it, okay? So normally it is you've chosen the wrong audio input or microphone input, okay? So really be aware of that. Furthermore, and I don't know how many times I've seen this, but it really makes me angry, okay? Especially with my students. Um, I don't know how many times I've seen this, but people log in with a black screen and no audio, which I just find bizarre, okay? And they don't say anything until asked, like, hi, John, how's it going, are you there? Now, for me, this is very rude, and I, and I mean, would you walk, I mean, ask yourself this, would you walk into a, an office meeting with a bag over your head and completely ignore the other people in the room? That's what I, that's what it's like. So don't log in with your audio off and your video off and, and then just not say anything, especially if you arrive late. Some people arrive late and then they try and hide because they feel bad. And then because maybe the, 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 the people in the meeting are sharing their screen, they don't actually see that the person has arrived and so that, that person may be forgotten for a while. So don't do that. If you come in late, you should always say a quick hello and excuse yourself for arriving late. Okay, my tip number three is ensure your office is properly equipped to run hybrid meetings. Now this is super important. Maybe this is outside of your control, but if you are in a position where you can you know, talk to uh, procurement about investing in equipment, then that I'm gonna to explain to you what you need. Basically, investing in your office or investing in hybrid meetings is basically investing in a smart projector or a tactile screen TV. A smart projector is basically like a projector that projects like a normal projector on a wall, but it's actually, it's got some tactile feature. You can actually like write on the board. Uh, they're really awesome, I use them uh, in my centers because uh, you can, they can double as a, as a massive screen or as a massive whiteboard. Okay, and a smart, uh, smart tactile TV, the prices have really come down on those. I mean, I think in Europe, you can pick up a really decent sized one for about 800 euros. So, I mean, it's not prohibitively expensive and it means that you can actually have a decent sized projector on the wall and have the people up there in the meeting. So that's really something to think about because if you've got people coming in for a meeting and they're just on like a little laptop screen, it's not really that as effective, okay? Now a smart projector or TVs which are tactile, uh, tactile sorry, and or usually have a pen, okay? And as a result, or if you don't have a pen, you can also invest in a USB digital writing pad. They're very cheap. You can grab those, pick those up for like 20 or 30 euros. And this means that you can use them as a digital whiteboard for brainstorming. What some organizations have is just a, a, an old school whiteboard and then they sort of angle the, the web camera towards it. And it's not a great look, especially for those who are online because it's really difficult to see and make out what's being written on the board, 
okay? But if you're using, for example, Zoom, then you can use the Zoom whiteboard and it's projected up on, this, up on the wall and everyone gets a really clear picture of it. So that's how we run it in my centers at my school. So I, I use a combination of hybrid class. When I'm doing hybrid classes or, or meetings, I'm using the Zoom whiteboard and a digital pen, or I'm using just a large projector screen that's tactile, okay? So why, why are these great? Because basically they're equally visual, visible to both online and offline participants, which is super important because obviously if you're online, it's gonna be a little bit more difficult to be, you know, there's a bit of a barrier still, okay? Now, additionally, it is essential that you have a wireless Bluetooth microphone. Many people forget about that. So that everybody in the in-person meeting can get close to it. Why do we wanna do that? Well, you know, if someone's wearing a headset or their little AirPods, I mean, only the person who's talking will be close enough to the mic to be heard well online. Okay, so if not, if you don't invest in this, then it's really difficult for the people online to hear properly. Conversely, and this is also important, the office will need decent speakers. So this is so that the audio from, the, from those online is clearly heard in the physical room. Uh, you don't really wanna be using the laptop speakers because they're not gonna be very effective unless everyone is huddling around a laptop, which is not also very comfortable. Okay. Point number four is whenever possible, use two monitors and extend your desktop, okay? This, is, this will allow you to see all the documents that you have uh, and you, you, know, you, you will also be able to see the participants on the other screen, okay? This is really helpful. And, the, and really with hybrid meetings, the more screen real estate you have, the more effective the meeting is or the easier it is to, to you know, control. Uh, documents and participants and see everyone at the same time, okay? You can even have a, a, a fixed computer screen and then extend it over to the mm, mm, uh, smart board or the smart projector, okay? Tip number five, if you are running the meeting, be sure to include everyone uh, by asking for comments and feedback, really important. Often, because people are in those small little squares on the, on the screen, you forget them. And you need to make an extra effort to include the people who are online, okay? They're gonna be connecting remotely and they're already gonna have this barrier and feel a bit like they are uh, not quite in the meeting, especially if you start focusing only on the people who are physically in the office, okay? Another thing is try getting into the habit of looking directly at the camera uh, from time to time. This will make, like a, make the people who are uh, coming in remotely feel like they're actually, you're actually talking to them and that, you're, that they're connecting uh, to the meeting, so that's really important. Make sure that you don't have any side discussions in person. Make sure that you're, you know, including everyone in the discussion. Sometimes, because you've actually got someone physically next to you, maybe you start having a little discussion with them, and then people can't hear on who are online. So, having little side meetings are a definite no-no. Okay. This is the next part, and this is bringing you towards the end of this episode, but these are things to watch out for when running hybrid meetings. Now, this is not an exhaustive list. There are many things to look out for, but I just wanna give you some of the, the, the most important ones, okay? So here is my list of things to look out for. Make sure you are close to a good Wi-Fi signal, or even better, go for an ethernet cable. I don't understand why, but people forget that Wi-Fi is not as strong as they think it is. I mean, ideally you should be running a meeting on ethernet because if you're not close to a Wi-Fi signal, mm, connection quality is gonna really struggle. Wi-Fi doesn't travel through walls well. So you should try and be close to the access point or to the, you know, the, the, the actual router if, you ha if you're working from home. If your router is down two floors and you're working in the study upstairs, then you know, you're gonna struggle with that. I recommend cabling up your house if possible, um, but if not, then get close to the router. Okay, and the ones that you plug into the wall, those power line ones, they don't do great either. It says that they do well, but they don't. And I've even seen someone plug a power line um, ethernet extension into a power board, which is like you know an, an, an extension cord. That just kills your internet speed. So that's really gonna make your connection struggle. You probably you'll probably take a hundred megabit connection right down to five or ten. Okay, uh, minimum for a Zoom call or an online meeting is about ten megabit, 
10 megabits and that's really the, the minimum minimum you'd need for speed wise. Okay, another point number two to consider is make sure you understand how to switch uh, quickly between audio sources. Uh, people often have the wrong default audio setting set and then this may take them like five minutes to fix the audio and if you're holding up the meeting, uh, it makes you look like a bit stupid and makes people wait and you know it's not a good feeling you get nervous especially so try and understand really quickly how to move between the different audio sources sometimes people are sharing their laptop with their kids or something I don't know people change stuff and then they um, can't they join they join a meeting and they're like oh one second and it's just like oh come on especially if you're like in a, in a lead role or you're presenting or something so super important that you understand these little technical things because normally the problems with these meetings is audio or maybe video. And point number three is make sure you have your camera at eye level and not pointing up your nose, okay? Cameras should be here because if you have it pointing up your nose, it doesn't look very good. Uh, plus it makes you look like you've got a double chin. I don't know, if you're like me, I like to look, you know, handsome on camera. So try and go for a good look the camera a little bit at eye level or a little bit raised uh, makes you look up a little bit so it flattens out your skin a little bit doesn't lead to like you looking down and having like a massive double chin which is not always a good look so little things like that I mean some people don't care about their appearance but you know I, I think it helps a little bit I don't like to see up people's nose while we're in a meeting so think about that little things can make a big difference so number four ensure you have decent lighting web cameras are notoriously bad in low light conditions. People uh, sitting in a room, they've got an average light over their head or they've got light to behind them and the, and the web camera just really doesn't, uh, really, it just, it really struggles in low light basically. So if you can sit near a window, get some natural light coming in, that makes a big difference. Or if you can, if you can have a light directly over you or shining, one of those light rings shining on your face that will make a big difference to the, the video quality on your web camera. Uh, and finally, number five, my last thing to consider or tip for making sure your meetings are more effective is try and be aware of your background noise. So mute your audio. Obviously, once you've come into the meeting, you've, you've said hello to everyone. But uh, Sometimes we've got a lot of background noise that we're not really aware of um, and especially if you're working in a public place such as a cafeteria or you're in an airport lounge or something like that or you've got your crazy kids screaming in the background because you have to work from home. Sometimes that can be very frustrating and annoying. Um, even I think one of, my, um, one of my employees, she's got an old clock bung, and it makes this terrible like bung noise I'm like oh my god and, and like whenever we have a meeting it startles people and we're like could you just turn off your audio for a second so I mean little things like that can make a big difference especially if you've got uh, background noise and one thing is like the you know the the, the headphones that you put in that, uh, that go on your phone and there's like a little audio microphone here those are the worst like that the audio quality on those head just like normal headphones like go in it's just they sound terrible and some of them uh, sometimes it sounds like there's like waves or ocean in the background so really try and test your equipment before you really get into this world of hybrid meetings okay now let's turn to a pro tip obviously at the Art of Business English we have been doing this for a long time uh, we run hybrid meetings every week we've been running hybrid classes for like over a year and a half now and we've had a lot of experience uh, at what works, what doesn't work. So if you want to improve your meetings and your participation in those meetings and if you're running those meetings, if you're planning them and you're trying to participate effectively, then you should definitely take a look at our premium course, uh, Confidence in Business Meetings in English. Uh, it's a complete program that walks you through all the steps right from the planning and preparation stage through to closing and giving feedback to people. It's got all of the essential language. It's full of tips on how to effectively run meetings. And if you're interested in maybe running hybrid classes or maybe you are uh, working in HR, you'd like your organization to be able to expand out into giving online classes 
to people in your organization or you'd like to run hybrid classes with people in your organization. We also have a, a very uh, interesting course called uh, How to Teach Any Language Online. Now it is for languages, but a lot of these uh, skills and techniques can be applied to uh, teaching it online in general. So you can teach really any topic, matter or area. So I'll link up to both of those programs uh, in the show notes uh, or on the blog and you can sign up for those. They're running at uh, very, very accessible prices for the, the content that is packed into them. So hopefully you will enjoy that. And if you are interested, let me know with any questions. Give me some feedback on what you've thought. Okay, and if you're planning on running any of your hybrid meetings and you do have any questions, then just let me know. I've got lots of experience, been doing it for a long time, know all the tips and tricks and, and ways that you can uh, basically integrate the technology and use it to create a much more effective and productive environment for your meetings, connecting remote people with those in the office and ensuring that everyone has a good work experience. So that's it from me, people. I hope you've enjoyed this episode and I'll see you all next week on another episode of The Art of Business English. Take care. Bye for now.